Chris Boris. I'm in the product marketing team at uh, Nest Labs. I'm also the president of the Thread Group. Great. From a technology standpoint, Thread is designed to provide a very simple, secure, um, low-power mesh network um, for your home and its connected products. So it's really focusing on products um, for the residential setting, for the home market, um, and being able to easily and securely bring those products home, easily install them and connect them to other products in your home and have them do useful things for, for the user, for the homeowner. So we looked at lots of different network topologies, um, so hub and spoke, mesh, various different flavors of mesh, and we felt that um, the way Thread implements uh, mesh routing or mesh networking in the home is uh, going to yield sort of the best user experience, the best reliability. Uh, the whole idea about um, Thread and the way it does meshing is you can have all of these different products in your home all communicating with the ones that are within range, and it basically um, forms a sort of cohesive mesh network in your home that allows different products to communicate with sort of maximum uh, reliability so that there's no single point of failure on a thread network. So you can add and remove devices at will, bring new devices home, add them to the network, and remove devices or switch them off or perhaps they, they break and they stop being part of the network and the network still needs to survive. So we don't want the network to rely on a hub or a gateway that keeps that network there. Um, because Thread is designed really for sort of all sorts of different devices in the home and different use cases, and some of those use cases are things that require very high availability, um, things that like infrastructure in your home that's very safety critical to your home and the occupants, and we wanted a network that would be able to deliver that, that level of reliability um, in the home for all these different products. And also, as you bring you know, more products into the home and connect them to the network, we wanted each device that was capable to help extend the range of the network in the home, and meshing does that. The more nodes you have, the more routers you have, the better your coverage gets in the home as well, which is a really nice feature of mesh networking, or some mesh networks. So um, obviously it's going to start off with a very small number as you know, thread devices proliferate, but each thread network will support over 250 devices easily. Um, and that 250 device-ish um, limit is really, it's not a hard limit, it's what we think is a practical limit per network. If you happen to have a very, very large home and you needed more devices, you can have multiple thread networks in the home and you can bridge them together using something like a Wi-Fi network or an Ethernet network. The idea of Thread is that you know once you bring your devices home, you, you set them up, you connect them to the network, that's basically it. It's not a network that you have to manage. Um, now, some people could build products that do um, allow the user to manage the network, but the whole idea is that sort of connect and forget very much. So it's not like a, a network where you have to sort of remember passwords and things like that. It's not a network that you have to worry about assigning IP addresses and and so any sort of network management, we want to make it as easy for the, the user to use as possible. At first, it's, um, you know, the primary focus of the thread group is really about connected products for the home. Um, and in terms of the products that go into the home, you know, it's all sorts of different things. Um, so um, thermal comfort, um, energy saving, energy management devices, consumer applications and appliances, safety and security devices, um, lots of things that are infrastructure pieces in the home, but also sort of aftermarket devices, or not aftermarket per se, but sort of DIY capable devices that people would want to add to their home for safety and security and sort of, you know, new devices, you know, appliances, different types of appliances that people may want to be able to connect to, to to other devices in the home um, and, and uh, for the purposes of things like energy saving and comfort, and safety and security. Okay. It's really designed for sort of the residential setting and potentially like commercial, but there's nothing in the standard that says it must be used in a home. So people could join the thread group and use the technology outside of the home if they wish, but it's not really what the thread group is focused on promoting from, a, from an adoption perspective, but it's, the members are, are welcome to use it elsewhere if they think it's applicable.
Good question. Um, so way back when, you know, we looked at lots of different options um, of basically getting thread out there into the market and getting it used by lots of different companies. And we looked at a variety of different options and we felt that it was the most expedient way to actually get thread out there into the world and, and help market it and promote it was to set up um, uh, an alliance or a thread group uh, around promoting a marketing and promotions group with industry education being its focus uh, rather than um, you know setting up a standards development organization thread is not a standards body and we don't want to be a standards body however we do want to work with other alliances and standards bodies so we thought let's set thread group up keep it very very focused on thread and as we um, as I think we should talk a little bit about thread is is a networking protocol it's not a full top to bottom stack it runs on standard 802.15.4 silicon and it provides that IPv6 mesh network but it doesn't include an application layer so obviously that's not a full top to bottom software stack for a product um, so you know thread will run on the standard silicon so silicon sort of taken care of the networking protocol is really where thread is focused and then Lots of um, other alliances and industry initiatives have uh, created and standardized and promoted application layers. And the whole idea of Thread is to be able to support lots of different application layers. Um, and basically anything that's low bandwidth and IPv6 can run over Thread. So I think each of these different technologies has got different focuses, you know, um, and we see thread being complementary to other networks that carry IPv6. So looking at things like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, um, I believe future versions of Bluetooth will carry IPv6, and, and Wi-Fi already carries IPv6. And the whole idea um, of thread is that thread is another IPv6 carrying network. And you can have all these different networking technologies in your home. You use IPv6 as a convergence layer that actually crosses all of these different basically different wireless networking technologies, but binds them together into one sort of IPv6 network in the home. Um, and um, and that's, that's very much how Thread was designed, is to be able to integrate with other networks in the home, because Thread is great for lots of different types of products in the home, but you know, Thread isn't in mobile phones, and Thread isn't in laptops, so, but Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are. So if you can use IPv6 to connect your phone to the, your, or, or your laptop to your Wi-Fi network and have it route information from your Wi-Fi network to, your, to, to your thread network, it makes really interesting uh, network topologies possible. And from a product market or a product management, sorry, from a product company perspective, I should say, being able to use these different networking technologies in different products for different use cases creates a lot of flexibility and allows you to really build some very interesting products and services in the future. Uh, right, so, well, quite a lot, actually. Um, so we have companies who've joined the Thread Group um, since we opened up membership last month. Um, and there's a variety of different ways that companies can get involved in Thread and learn more about Thread after they become members. Um, so um, we're releasing technical documentation, um, beginning to release technical documentation to members in November, um, so later this month. Um, and we're going to be uh, talking to the different member companies who join later this year about what you know, basically as they learn more, getting feedback from them. And then we're going to be having a big member meeting in the Bay Area in February next year. Um, and there'll be sort of regular cadence of, of meetings and discussions with between um, the Thread Group and, and the new members who've joined um, going out all through next year. Um, and they can learn more about the certification program, get involved in the working groups, um, and uh, start getting access to the technology. So you, um, three of the companies in the Thread Group are going to be offering um, Thread, I guess, basically components. So ARM, Freescale, and Silicon Labs are actually going to be offering, um, you know, development platforms, chips that come with Thread software. And so companies can actually start using Thread uh, very, very soon as well, based on the deliverables from those three companies I mentioned. So the, the seven founding companies uh, for the Thread Group are Arm, uh, Big Ass Fans, uh, Freescale, Silicon Labs, uh, Yale, Samsung, and Nest. Yeah. yeah so we, we want um, uh, we want companies to you know learn about Thread and give feedback. Um, you know where they, they feel that feedback is important. 
um, and things that they spot in, in, in the technology and how the organization's been run to, to improve things. Um, but yeah, um, you know, thread technology is going to be available through those three companies I mentioned yeah, next year. Great.